Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Um, subscribers, thanks for staying subscribed. Um, if you haven't subscribed, maybe you'll subscribe after you see this video. Today we're working on a 2002, I believe, Honda CRV. Um, I'm going to show you how to replace a ball joint on this car. But let's go ahead and first remove um, the wheel. These are uh, the lug nuts on here are a, what I'm using is a 3 4 socket. Um, let's go ahead and take the, the wheel nut off. Um, I'm using a 36 inch socket. Let's see if the Nano can take it off. And it sure can. Um, I've been in here recently so I know the CV shaft is, is movable. So. That is good. We're going to be also be replacing the uh, brake hardware, uh, just the caliper brackets and caliper push pins on front and rear. Um, but to get to be able to work on the ball joint, we actually have to turn the wheel, so turn it so that the caliper is out towards you to get better access to it all. Let's go ahead and remove the brake caliper. Go ahead and compress the piston, put a flat head in there, just compressing it. A little slow, you can see it move, compress. Also, these push pins are bad in this, so they're not going to compress all the way. Um, to remove the push pin, I have a half inch socket, run reverse, and comes right out. And Comes right out. All right, caliper is officially free. We need these. The new pads don't come with it. These little springs. Um, this is actually all garbage. Can you see? You can. Anyways, this won't move. So that's no good. So to remove the actual mount, it's a. I just had it too. 17 millimeter, I know it is. I just don't know what I did with this 17 millimeter socket. Where'd it go? Oh, I made it under my magnet. All right, put the 17 on. Get on there. Get on. There we go. 17 millimeter. There's one. And there's the other one. This whole piece right here, we're not keeping. So these rotors have screws that um, hold them on. Um, you're just going to want to undo them. Um, the, I've been on this side of the vehicle before. Um, I'll post a link to the video. I think it was CV shaft, that's why. Um, so they're loose. Um, if they're not, don't force them. You will um, round them out and you don't want to do that, like, I may actually not be putting this one back in because it's not coming out too easy. Because you don't want to uh, round it out and not be able to get it out. That won't be good. So actually this one, you don't need to put them in. They're not necessary. Um, they're for when they're putting the assembly of the vehicle on the, at the factory floor. Um, I won't be putting this one in. Um, so you don't have to. I mean, I haven't put anti season in here, and I guess it didn't really do anything for it. All right. So we have to remove the brake line because um, we're going to take the whole assembly out. So it's a half inch bolt. I'm getting to it. It comes out. 
as you can see. That's all it is. And then we're going to have to disconnect all the ABS stuff. Alright, so there's two plastic clips that are holding the ABS wire on. Um, there's one right here and there's one on the back of the back of the uh, um, shock. The exact same um, connection to get it off. You're just going to push in these tabs and it comes right out. And actually these broke. They, these are actually kind of crappy. The other side broke too. Um, but same thing on the back. I know you can't see it, but I'm back here doing it. I'm trying to. And they might break. So the nut that holds the ABS sensor was pretty bad. Um, but luckily, well not luckily, but in my case, because I have to take the whole shaft off, this was actually destroyed. Um, so just touching it and it popped off. I'm actually going to use a a zip tie to hold um, it up. I had to actually do the same thing on the other side because it was that badly rusted. To make it easier to get the um, control arm loose, I'm going to re be removing the bushing that holds the stability bar on. I um, can't remember which size it was. Um, not that one. Sorry about the shakiness. Um, but I, you know, I'm showing you because I actually can't show you when it's um, underneath the vehicle. Um, not too sure of the size, but um, I gotta take it off. Um, I'll come back when it's off. So uh, those fasteners were a size um, 9 16 um, Let's go ahead and pop the rotor off. And it's gonna give me trouble just like the other one did. I, I don't know why they do this. I'd love for like, if any of you know why these rotors um, you know get stuck on this way please let me know I don't understand why they're so incredibly difficult to get off it's insane so what I'm doing is I'm sticking in and I'm getting it comes with a new set so I'm not too worried about it but I'm actually sticking in the old push pin um, bolts um, so that I can push the uh, the, cal the rotor off um, half inch we're gonna put it on forward two and just drive them in. And you want to drive them in evenly See, it's starting to come off. Or the other side now. Now, actually bending it. this rotor because the customer has new ones to put on. Uh, see, it's still, I don't understand why it's so tough, but it's off. All right, so we can actually get the whole uh, strut assembly with the knuckle off. We have to take the tie rod end off. It's a 17 millimeter socket. I'm actually supposed to be replacing the tie rod ends for this customer, but the tie rod end is actually welded to the whole um, inner tie rod, so they have to replace both. So. If yours is sat for a while, like this one has, I'd recommend going ahead and buying a new tie rod and the tie rod inner. So both assemblies, because I have to tell the customer they got to go back and buy the other ones. Um, and then we have to repair again. Um, so that'll be another video. So just take your 17, put it on. Let me make sure I'm on in reverse. Certainly am. For reverse, I've already taken the color pin out. And we're out. So now it's free. Now, it's going to be hard getting it back on. I'm not going to show that. It's not going to be easy. You're finding your own way getting it on and off. Um, so now what I'm going to do is remove the um, bolt from the bottom of the steering knuckle. 
Um, I'm just gonna undo you and bring you all the way down. Wee, look, it's like a plane. Um, so that bolt right there is gonna come off. These are really cool. It's just like a, a spring, spring thing that holds them on. You basically can just pull it out. And of course, I'm gonna make a fool of myself and not be able to pull it out. Undo that, and it just, oh, there we go. Sorry, guys. Um, and there, it's out. You don't wanna lose it. I heard it hit the ground. Well, anyways, um, you're gonna wanna take, we're gonna take that, that off, um, and then I'll come back once it's off. So now that the uh, castle nut for the um, ball joint is removed, I'm just gonna wanna turn the whole strut assembly and this um, ball joint's destroyed and we're replacing it. I'm taking a pickle fork, those are the tools you can buy. Um, you can hammer what it goes through, but on this car, it don't work that way. So just hammer your pickle fork, and it's out. So now, we're gonna move to the inside of the engine. Because we have to remove the whole strut assembly, um, we're gonna go ahead and remove these three um, nuts that hold the strut in. Um, I have it as a 9 16th socket. There's one, um, oops, go on the ground, we want it in the little bin. And two, and now they're on the last one, the fun part comes. You wanna hold the strut, part of the spring, because when you undo it, actually not in this case, it would wanna drop, but we didn't take it out of the, the, uh, um, what is that thing called? The control arm, so it's still trying to stop. Now you want to take your pry bar underneath the control arm, push down, lift up on the assembly. Uh, probably gonna, I'm actually gonna put a knot back in the strut. Make it a little bit easier for me. Okay, so now, push down, there, now it's free, and luckily, because I just put the CV shaft in, this CV shaft comes out freely, hold your strut assembly, undo the, bol the bolt, come on out, there we go, it's kind of heavy. Alright, so now we're going to remove the ball joint, the ball joint presses out this way. Um, you can tell this also by looking at your new one. That's a tie rod. This is definitely the ball joint. Okay. By looking at your new one. So, uh, let's see. Let's put this all in focus. There we go. So as you can see, this actually has a ridge on it because it pushes in there's a lip because you're gonna put a ring in there it's not a C what are they called C ring one of those weird clips you have to take off with a special tool I forgot the name of it but it pushes down in so we're gonna actually want to push it out and um, I'll show you how I do that and I'm not even gonna cut it I'm just gonna put you back into focus there we are so uh, uh, excuse me I burped I rented a tool from advance and surprise the tool was broken so I'll have to deal with that when I bring the bring it back. Um, I'm using this cup. It fits perfectly in there. At least on the other side it did. But there's actually a lot of rust in there. Uh, there we go. I'm using this fitting to go on. And then I'm actually going to use, i got to find it, one of my sockets. One of my sockets over the, the end of it. So now we're gonna undo this. Actually, I don't think I have to. Actually, since it's broken, you're not supposed to use this way, but because this is broken, this is the way I'm using it. And not much I can do if 
the tool I rented is broken. They really only opened the box, and that's it. They didn't pick it out, and the end literally, I don't know if I can, this end, which is on it, snapped right off. Um, so, oops. Let me undo it some more. Um, Tighten it, tighten it. All right, and then I'm going to get my big gun. Here we go. Uh, big gun, and then I'm gonna put you on pause for a second while I find the socket I need. All right, so I found my big gun and the socket for it. I wanna go on forward, and I'm gonna start with the lower speed on it. Some more, and then enough more power. Push right through. So let's go ahead and get that out. And there's the old ball joint. Pretty cool, eh? It's done. Um, and now that we get the new one. Um, the new one is actually easier. Let's go ahead and take the, the screw off, or the castle nut off. Um, the kit that this customer got, um, I recommend it, because um, I hate circ ones with a little clip, a little grease thing on it. Um, this side's actually easier. So all you're gonna do is start feeding it in, take the cup, and then just do this. Hopefully you guys get we're basically just doing this. Super easy. Um, tighten it by hand first. Do, 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 do. Make sure it doesn't move around which it wants to. And then we're going to put it on forward and it's going to push the new ball joint in. So now to hold it in, it comes with this uh, metal ring um, with a slit in it. So you don't have to use any of those pliers to do it, special ones. I'm just using a flathead and uh, pushing it all the way around and making sure it's in the groove. Look all around, make sure it's all in the groove. And it is. And this is all done. Let's go uh, to the car. So first we're going to put the shock in the car. I'm going to grab one knot. And it is specific on the way. It, goes in, it only goes in one way. So these two are further away than these two are. And it's the exact same way on the, the shock. Or, or on the mount. So you're going to just want to Push, lift it up through, line the holes up, grab your one nut, and there we go. Let's get a few more threads on there. Okay, I'm happier with those. Two more threads, grab your other two fasteners. One, and two. Let me go grab my air gun. I think it might be a little bigger than this. Let's watch it be all right size. All right, put my awesome new Nano on forward. I love this little thing. There it is. There it is. And there it is, all done. All right, now let's try. I bought these special mechanic gloves and I'm so used to not using them that I don't use them. Okay, so 
grab a receiver shaft. You're gonna wanna put, get it in the hub, matching all your splines up. Um, and it takes a little bit of work, but you'll get it in there. You will, you will, you will. There we go. Match up and work your splines in. Oh, there goes the crowbar, but that's okay for now. Come on, get that there. Splines are in. Um, and now I'm actually gonna take the wheel nut. Uh, can you see, can you guys see all this? Yeah, you can. Um, take the wheel nut and actually put the, put it back on. That way it isn't flopping around on me. Got it on forward full. There, that is on. All right, so now we gotta, you know, get that all back in. So what we do, and this is why we took the CV, not the CV chef, the uh, tie rod end off. You still recording? Yeah. Go down and push it in. All right, let, actually we gotta bend the, the new ball joint in, which is actually kind of hard. There we go. Angle it in a bit. Push the control arm down. And there, now it's in. Okay. Um, sometimes you have to just wiggle your CV here. Uh, what is this called? <laughs> Steer knuckle a little bit to get it going all the way. Here's the uh, new castle nut, it's a size 17. Comes with a collar pin, but I'm gonna use the old one because I like it more. Um, 17 millimeter. Nice and tight. Um, now all we have to do is find the holes. We just have to go a little bit further. There it is. And pop it into place. And that's locked in, awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and put the rotor on. Um, like I said, I'm not putting those screws back in. So, you just put the rotor on, and you're done. They're not needed. So I already routed the emergency brake line and I held the one side up with a uh, zip tie. Um, but we undid the holder for the caliper. So now we have to Put it back in place. And it just goes in there. Um, and the camera's in the way, so I'm gonna do it without you guys there. So I can show you with you guys watching. in. Oh, diddly diddly done. Just have to get my socket out. For some reason now it wants to be difficult. Come on. There we go. Socket's off. Now okay, so we got the new caliper bracket. We're going to reuse the old caliper bracket um, mounting bolts because there's not a wrong with them. Uh, they're 17 millimeter if I didn't say that in the beginning. And then let's go ahead, 17 millimeter. We've got it on forward three. And nice and tight. Now we got some new pads. And I had lube and it disappeared on me. Oh, I see it, it's back here. Um, a little bit of lube on my fingers. So, I guess since I got the lube on my fingers, I'll go ahead and put it on the, the new mounting hardware. Good, you guys. Just putting some of the lube that came with the, the customer's new stuff. In there. Um, and then just gonna Stick it on there. Let's put the old one in the box. They gotta take them. Same thing with the, the one on top. 
Just putting some lube there. And this will stop it from squeaking. Cause squeaking's bad. Even though Honda's, Honda's squeak. I mean, another one, my Altima squeaks. Sometimes things just squeak. Um, new brake pads. Uh, just putting some assembly lube or whatever, you know, you want to call it. Uh, and I'm just using this cause this is what the packet came with. Um, indicator side goes on the back. Um, grab for the front. Um, again, just some lube or anti squeak. Um, I'm putting it in, slapping it into place, and now let's first check and make sure that this. Um, actually, we need to go get the, the push pins. We're still here. One second. All right, I'm back. Um, maybe I'm not back. I gotta where put the lube. I gotta get the lube, lube, lube. <sighs> All right. Okay, so they got new grommets as well. The old ones had broken. They're specific on which side they go in. Um, because this side actually fits inside the bracket. Other side in the bracket. Uh, come on. Get in there. Mm, and I'm just twisting it will help it. You just finagle it in. That's all in. All in. Um, new caliper push pins. Um, the grommet set came with um, this little thing here. Hopefully you can see it. Um, and it fits on this push pin. Goes right over. It's like a dampener. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some... I like to put a little bit of lube just a little bit inside for the bottom, for when it bottoms out. Um, and then of course you put a little bit of lube on your on your pins. And then go ahead and slide your new pit in. Make sure it goes in easy. And make sure it fits over the edge. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see it. Make sure it fits over the edge. Now, same thing with the, the one on top. Go ahead and lube it up. I know I'm lubing it up off camera, but I think if you see my other videos that I show the how to lube it up. It's not that big of a deal. Anyways, what well, is a big deal? Lube it up, um, and then make sure it goes in. Perfect. I like that. I'm happy. Now take the, your new or your caliper. Make sure it fits. Um, and it does, but barely. Um, now it's time. You have to take your awesome spring clips that push the... No, I lost one. Darn it. Well, the new kit doesn't come with it. That sucks I lost one. Um, dang it. I don't like it when I lose stuff. Shoot. Anyways, it'll be okay. Um, anyways, you just want to put your caliper over. Sometimes you just gotta bang it. Goes into place. These calipers have to, or the push pins have to be flat up against the flat pot on the on your caliper. Um, but they'll turn in to the right direction. Um, luckily, it came with new uh, bracket hardware as well. All right, just tightening them up. Same thing for the bottom. Tightening that up. And let's go back to the size that it is. So we can tighten them all the way. Um, I'm showing a size of 9 16 so I got it on forward three. Some tight. all done and now let's go ahead I'm gonna put the wheel on you see me do that and then we're gonna go do the same thing on the back with the remote uh, changing out the caliper hardware <laughs> 
Because unless someone will say it, I did not forget to put the tie rod bolt back on. We're out of battery, so hopefully I can finish this in time. Um, we're just replacing the hardware on this side, um, removing the caliper uh, bracket bolt. We got a 9 16 Let's go ahead and zip this off. All right, yep, look how easy that is. Come off. Next one comes right out, throws itself. Um, you want to take a flathead. Of course, I had one around. And no, I don't. All right, let's go ahead and compress it unless we can. It's getting compressed. There we go. Go ahead and take it off. Um, slide these out. They slid slide, slide out. I don't know why they're not sliding out. It's weird. Yeah, these are just supposed to pop right out. Weird. Uh, let's grab it, I guess, from the side. How's my battery doing? Okay. Come on out. There we go. I don't like that at all. That it didn't. Those didn't come out that easy. They're just supposed to slide right out. Um, but we were using the pads. These are. These are practically new. What the heck? There we go. So now let's go ahead and remove the, is this the same size? It is the same size for the, the bolt that removes the bracket. Go ahead and uh, spin on there. Let's get some more, some more rope or some more air. Come on. There we go. There's one. Then do the other one. And there, come on. Uh, we got some room now. There we go. Falls off. Doesn't matter. We're not using it. Oh, see, these ones weren't that bad. Over here. So let's go ahead and do them. Um, got the new one. The new one. I'm going to go doing this fast. Um, let's set the gun for forward. My head's in the way, I apologize. But I gotta see what I'm doing. Uh, excuse me, I burped. Mountain Dew and uh, Kit Kats aren't exactly uh, enough to eat for one day. That's nice and tight, get the bottom one. Nice and tight, let's make sure that we still got battery. We do, go ahead and take the, the shims. Gonna put them right back in there. Man, that one. Alright, that's weird. Uh, come on, fit in. It's being difficult. There we go. So the new, the old pad, they just slide down in there. Let's have them slide. I don't know why that one. There we go. Um, so now we have the push. Let's go ahead and put the rubber brackets on. Yeah, you guys can still see. If you cut out, I won't know. I can't see behind the camera. Um, they go a specific way. You've got a little bit more boot on this side. It simply just goes in to the bracket. That one's in. Put the next one in. And get in there. Almost there. Let's, let's make sure we got it's in. Then we got our new push pins and push pin bolts. Um, take them out. Um, grabbing the lube. Put some lube on it. Lube it up. Both sides. Go ahead and push it in. Um, and make sure that it's around the, the lip right here. We can see there's a lip. Um, do it to the next one. And then let's go ahead and push it in. 
There we go. Put the cap on my lube. Let's go ahead and take the uh, caliper, put the caliper back on. Take your new hardware, your new uh, fasteners. Um, go ahead and tighten them up. Um, these are also the same size, nothing changed. Done. And done. You've all seen me put wheels on before, so I'm not going to do that for you. Um, but that's how you replace a ball joint. Um, well, this is kind of out of focus. I apologize for that. Um, but that's how you replace the ball joint. Um, same way for both sides. Um, and then replace the um, brake hardware. Um, uh, hopefully we'll come back. It sucks I wasn't able to raise the tie rod, but it was just so seized to. There was nothing I could do. Um, so we'll just get all new. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, if you like, go ahead and hit that like button. If you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, go ahead and put it in the comment section. I try to always answer every question that you guys ask. Um, if there's any kind of repair that you guys would like to see, go ahead and ask that as well. Um, but uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.